Greetings fellow football managers and welcome to the post-Easter world. I apologize for my one week break, but things were a little bit crazy as they do when part of your username is dad. Today I'm going to try and give you a short one. I'm recording it in 1440p because I think I'm going to stay mostly in the match engine over here. If you've ever gone into a game and thought why or why do I never get any highlights, well... One big possibility is the fact that your build-up play is not working. Essentially, your build-up play is breaking down, the opposition have the ball, and they create all of the highlights that you are seeing. Just for a little bit of context, we're going to go with this formation here. I have included a couple of mistakes, which I'm going to try and rectify as we get the match going, because there are a couple of things I want to illustrate to you. Let's get in there. All right, so we're just about ready to hit the kickoff button, but guess what? I am going to be very, very careful about this. We're going to skip all of the formalities, but then we're going to pause the game straight away. Now, if you're playing a real game, you would go through this area. You would kind of advance time. You'll be playing on one of these highlight modes. I personally like to play in comprehensive. There are plenty of people who play on extended, and if you're trying to run through a couple of seasons you are probably going to play on key highlights mode. Now, if you want to actually fix up a problem, or if you've seen that you're just not getting any highlights in the first 20, 25, 30 minutes, this is what you need to do. Go up here and click full match. This is the number one tip I can give you ever. The simple thing is build up play is not going to be covered with highlights. It is how you get the ball up and down the field or not, and how those highlights are actually generated. So if you are playing in highlight mode, you are making assumptions. You have no idea what is actually going on in terms of your buildup. So hit that full match button if you actually want to try and work on your buildup play and get serious about creating some more highlights. So now we can actually watch the match in granular detail. I obviously have the speed turned up just a tiny little bit. It just looks a little bit more realistic this way. Okay, so you can see immediately that we are now in our buildup phase. Probably not really a transition because it's so deep. But one of our center backs has the ball. Our team is basically looking in shape. We've got our left back over here. We've got our left center back. And we've got somebody here who got stuck a little bit in the defensive phase. But he will move up a little bit. That's a deep line playmaker though. So he has a little bit of freedom. We have our two forwards up there. We've got our shadow striker here. And we've got our right wing back over here. So let's see how the build up play actually devolves. Okay, it goes to our deep line playmaker even though he was slightly out of position. That is something that you can generate by choosing a deep line playmaker. Now we're with the wing back and he's driving forward. Not the best pass potentially. And that was not the best piece of play either. What's important was we were able to transition the ball up the field, get it to our attacking players. So in that sense, the build-up play worked a little bit by means of the wing back left running with the ball. That was a ball carrier, ball progression, and then he gave it to the forward who is expected to do something with it. So in terms of build-up, that was fine. That's not really the topic of this video, though. The topic of this video covers the match a little bit more. Situations like this. Again, we start at our center backs, and we shift it through the midfield, and now our midfielder tries something. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it back to the defense. Yep, we get it back to the defense. He's just looking a little bit because our tempo is low. Therefore, our center back was very, very happy to kind of linger on the ball a little bit. He's not under pressure. I'm just going to pause this to point out something. If we look at our instructions, we've got shorter passing, slightly lower tempo. If that tempo was higher up, Amin Odzic would have tried a little bit more decisively to do something with the ball. But because he was not pressed, he did not really do anything with the ball, even though... He is a ball-playing defender. So does he ping that killer pass in? Look, he's a BPD. No, he doesn't. Did Braganza try to do that? Kind of, yeah, he did. Even though he's a central midfielder defend, but then again, he has vision 15. So he was just utilizing that vision. Let's keep going and see what happens. Again, we come into the deep line playmaker. If he is available, your team will try and get him on the ball as soon as possible. Now, this was the mistake that I wanted to point out. You saw Sissoko get on the ball. There was a nice little through pass here to the right wing back, who is an attack duty player. So to move the ball into attack, one of our jobs of our team is to actually get the ball to Bogle, the attacking right wing back, to get the ball to Archer, who is an advanced forward attack, to get the ball to our target man up there, or to get the ball to our shadow striker. Those are the attacking players. So Sissoko did not do that. Why didn't he do it? This is a mistake that I've made. If we look at Sissoko, 
Vision, 9. Passing, 13. Composure, 12. Decision making, 13. Those 12s and 13s are just about serviceable in the Premier League. They're not really Premier League level attributes, but they are serviceable if other things are in place. And overall, Sissoko has been a fantastic player. The problem here is he is next to the attacking wing back where we want the ball played through so that the wing back can run into space. He's near a shadow striker who's making some interesting runs and he is near the target man. To be fair, the target man is generally an easy pass from the right central midfield position but the other passes are not easy. So having Sissoko here is a mistake I made throughout the early part of the season. Even though I want him kind of getting forward a little bit, winning the ball aggressively, running up and down thanks to his awesome physicals, his passing was a huge problem in my build-up. For that reason, I moved Sissoko to the middle and I got Braganza with Vision 15, Passing 15, Composure 17. I moved this guy into the Carrilero area so that he could actually find Jaden Bogle's runs. So part of the job with build-up play is mentality and tempo and the right roles for the defenders. You can see here Relvas has take fewer risks on set manually by me. He's also a basic center back. That is because his vision is kind of low at 11. In fact, that's an improvement. It was 10 and 9 before when I signed him. And his passing is quite low in 12. Composure, not terribly high. Decisions, again, not terribly high. So I want this guy playing the most simple ball possible. And he has four players around him, or even five if you count the goalkeeper, to play those simple passes. One of them is the DLP. So his job is to just try and play a pass, short pass, straight to the deep line playmaker's feet. Amadodzic can be a little bit more expansive with his passing, but thanks to the mentality, thanks to the tempo, thanks to the shorter passing instruction for the team, he's also not really going to try and ping that ball out there. So in terms of build-up play, we're looking for these really short passes in among all of these players. So let's just confirm that change. And I'm going to point out again, I think I showed you in one of my previous videos that having all of these players in the right area with the right instructions is the key to build up play. Again, Amin Odzic, he's not going to slam that pass out there when it's not on. Instead, he chooses the easy one and Bogle goes right back to him. Again, low tempo. There's no hurry to turn and get on the ball and run with it. If you increase your tempo, increase your passing directness maybe a little bit, it's more about the tempo, really. It's more about the mentality. He would have turned and tried to make a suicidal run forward where there's two or three players in front of him. Another huge ingredient of this is to go in and look at this play out of defense instruction. So that one is absolutely key. Your players aren't going to be patiently moving around like they are now if you don't have play out of defense set. They will just try and slam it out there. They'll try and get it out of defense as quickly as possible. In this case, we're just trying to make these little combinations to move the ball up the pitch. As you can see, we've just played it up there into the target forward, and it's probably a mistake from the target forward that he didn't do anything with that chance because we combined nicely and made a nice passing move up the pitch and into the box, basically. So for me, as a manager, that is exactly the type of play I'm trying to create with this team, with this set of instructions. So I'm absolutely absolutely thrilled about that. To be honest, I could think about changing the target man's instructions because the target man isn't supposed to run with the ball. And in that situation, he probably should have actually dribbled a little bit. So maybe complete forward support would be a better role for our friend Lorenzo Luca. Again, now we are playing the ball quite patiently into the left back. And now we need to make sure that there is a triangle. Archer is a little bit far away. The left sided forward was a little bit far away. But Almada, the playmaker, is set to deep line playmaker and he's set to also stay wider, which is why he's almost in a left back position here. So Doig, who is our left back, is having the freedom to go up with the confidence that there's somebody there to cover. If I am the dominant team, as it kind of looks like already in this game, you can see 66% possession, and that's been a bit of a theme of my team in the last few matches. If I am a dominant team like this, I can actually push the deep line playmaker up into a roaming playmaker. That is one change I can do to try and get ourselves a little bit further up the field. But that's all stuff that you can only see in full match. All of this would really not be highlights. All this playing the ball around, good little passing moves, shifting from side to side. Again, that's a factor of the lower tempo, the short passing instructions. And there we had the killer pass. Who was that? That was Daniel Braganza, who, as you saw, I shifted into the Carrilero because he's just a little bit further up the field. He's got those interesting passing lanes. He's got the kind of inside passing lane to our advance forward over here, which he just tried. And then he's got the outside one to the wingback attack on the other side. So getting a good passer in that position 
is absolutely key. This guy here, not as big of a deal because he's more about the ball retention and he has lots of players around him. So putting the right player in the right place also helps you. In fact, more than helps you, it's actually crucial to transition your game from a nice, neat build-up play into a quick attacking move like that. That's something that we're seeing in real-life football quite a lot in terms of teams kind of just slowly passing the ball around and then suddenly bamming it forward. That is where your really good passes, your high vision, high composure, high decision-making, high passing skill, that's where those players come into play. It's from transitioning from build-up to a actual chance. The last ingredient I want to touch on, and I'm not really sure that we actually get a chance to look at it. Let's actually hope that we do. In fact, I'm cheering for my own team or rather cheering against my own team is to let Villa have a chance so that my goalkeeper gets on the ball. There we go again. There was that through ball. This time it's Braganza who plays in Bogle. That's what I've been talking about all this time. Getting this guy into the Carrilero position rather than the central midfielder defensive to unlock that through pass, which our Vision 9 player did not see. Our Vision 15 player did see it and he was able to actually pull it out. And now it's up to Bogle because he doesn't have very many options around him. The Shadow Striker is staying central. The Target Man has dropped a little bit into an option, but he doesn't have too many choices. So Bogle's game needs to be running, charging up the flank and putting in a cross. So that's then where you know if that's your tactic, you're happy with that tactic, that's when you then know, okay, I need to get a world-class right back here who has lots of pace, who has lots of dribbling, who has lots of crossing to be able to actually make use of this tactic. That is what we need with that particular position. So as you can see, all of these things feed into each other a little bit and Bogle, he just lost out there, whether it was decision-making or dribbling, something like that. It could have also been strength where the player gets, uh, you know, shouldered off the ball. Could have been that, but he lost out. So let's hope that Villa can actually attack. They're not doing a very good job of it because I've got a very steady mid-block kind of setup as well. So on top of the possession, the playing out of the back, the controlled kind of play, the controlled build-up, I also have a fairly decent blocking system. So I'm not sure Villa's actually going to get a chance, but one of the big things about playing out from the back is to go into in-transition and set your goalkeeper to distribute to centre-backs. This is one of those big things because if you don't set this, your goalkeeper will use his own initiative. He might have something else. You have a target man on the field, so kicking it long to the target man is a good option for him. You've got a playmaker on the field, so you might look to find the playmaker somehow, whether it's possible or not. Set the goalkeeper to distribute to center backs because that means he will try and roll it out or pass it out to these two guys and then you can actually start your build up setup and one of the key thing here is obviously to have lots of players in this area a lot of teams are playing this kind of 3-4-3 three, three. I'm playing a 4-3-1-2 again it's the same thing we've got seven players back in this area couple of guys who can run the ball out, couple of guys who can pass the ball out. And these two guys in the middle, this guy here, the goalkeeper, is also fairly conservative on the ball. Conservative, as I said again, is to set, take fewer risks and shorter passing on a particular player and make sure you actually give him options around there. Otherwise, he's going to get pressed and his poor composure might get exposed. Another thing to do might actually be to not use roles like ball playing defender. I am doing this because Amadodzic is solid. He's got passing 15, vision 14, decision making, composure. All of those things are high up there. He's also got a PPM of bring ball out of defense, which means actually he kind of advances with it, dribbles it forward a little bit. So I have no problem with him doing all of those things. However, I've only made that change as of about six months of in-game time ago. Until then, I was running two central defenders with take fewer risks on both of them. So essentially, that is it. That is how to build up like a lot of the teams you watch on the TV. If you watch the Premier League, almost every team tries to build out of the back and play all of those short build-out kind of things. Brighton have kind of popularized this third man pass thing that's also something you can engineer using this kind of system bringing down the mentality bringing down the tempo especially because that's what kind of allows your center backs to slow the game down make the pass only when they come under pressure and then your other players who are moving around will actually make quick passes if they're getting pressed as well so you will see it organically you can't actually tell your players okay make third man passes that kind of granular instruction is not really in football manager but you can kind of engineer it by using your passing directness and your tempo. If you're afraid of other teams actually pressing you, make sure that you have enough players in position here to outnumber the press. That is again what managers like Xabi Alonso do. 
They make sure that they have something like six, seven, sometimes even more players in the build-up area and then running out. As you've seen in a couple of examples already, you could have a wing-back attack who still gets involved in the build-up, still passes it back, but is very, very happy to make the run forward once somebody has the ball. One of your attacking players on a support duty, like for me, this guy Luca, who's on the ball right now, is a target forward support in this particular tactical setup. That is also important because he will hold on to the ball for a second. He's a little bit deeper, so he allows the other players to make runs around him. See that Bogle is running past him. So that kind of helps as well to engineer those chances to get the team going forward after your build-up was successful. So just to recap a little bit as this match goes on, if we look at instructions, in possession, what's important is shorter passing across the team generally, although you can go to one guy, the player who you want playing those killer balls. Braganza, in my case, for example, you might go and set him to slightly more direct passing. You might set him to take more risks or something like that. But generally, across the team, you want shorter passing and you want slightly lower tempo. If the tempo is higher, they will not wait to be pressed. They won't kind of put their foot on the ball and wait for a challenge. The timing won't be there. And the timing is very critical in build-up play, in playing it out from the back. And again, playing out of defense is key. And you want to make sure that your mentality is fairly decent. If your mentality is way too high, that will also lift the tempo. It'll make your players play the ball forward too urgently. In transition, the best one or the biggest one, the most important one is distribute to center backs. Generally, you're going to need that. Although distribute to fullbacks is an option as well. You might click all of those just to get your keeper to play the ball out to somebody in that defensive unit. Generally, though, I like to go with distribute to center backs and then my center backs can begin They'll invite the press, and then we get out a lot quicker than the fullbacks where the passing options are a lot more limited. As you saw, in my formation, I've got seven players who are kind of in range for the center backs, but the fullbacks have only two or three players in range for a pass. So that is something to consider as well. Finally, out of possession, you don't really need to worry about this too much. Although, again, your defensive line might play a bit of a role. Having a lower defensive line could be good because then you're drawing the opposition team out further towards you you might be able to play a standard for example here or even a lower or much lower defensive line played out there and then have a couple of guys up forward like an advanced forward and a player with really good passing range in the midfield to be able to hit behind and then you can go up here and go pass into space but again that is a little bit tricky with build-up play because you don't want your build-up play uh, using pass into space. That would be catastrophic and you might get situations. Again, if you do it too low, if your defensive line is too low, you might have situations like Dortmund that happened on Wednesday, for example, where the third man pass goes horribly wrong. You pass to one of the presses instead and you concede an easy goal. That can happen as well. So be a little bit careful with what you do. But generally speaking, if you want more highlights, if you want to improve your build-up play, switch to full match see how it's going, see what's breaking down, see who's giving the ball away, how you're losing the ball. In this kind of case, I've already seen my target man's lost the ball a couple of times, so I might want to change that to complete forward. My advanced forward has lost the ball a couple of times. Hey, to be honest, I might want to change him to poacher because his name is Archer and he can't do very much other than score goals. And maybe my wingback, Jaden Bogle, on the right-hand side, he's not quite good enough to be one of the primary attacking threats of a team which is pushing for Europe. He's been fantastic up to this point, but my Sheffield United, as we'll see probably in the next video, is now pushing for Europe. So, thanks a lot. That has been Build-Up Play. Any other tips and tricks that you have in terms of perfecting your build-up and actually getting more highlights and not having all the highlights go against you, I would love to hear all of those. As always, thank you very much. I will talk to you in the comments below. Cheers.